Douglas Hansen here. I've spent the last 30 years studying risks, safety, and I've realized that we haven't studied it much. Carpentry has been around for thousands of years, studying risks and safety and understanding it, maybe a hundred. Here's another way to teach and deal with safety. I teach it as a standalone presentation as part of a fall protection training or technical rope rescue, avalanche uh, forecast and rescue, things like that. Over the last 30 some odd years, I've been in many different uh, environments. I've been a fireman, a climber, uh, well, anyway, I've learned a lot is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I surely don't know it all. In the bottom, uh, top left is a picture of a rope bridge. We were doing a stunt where one of these guys takes a fall above this white water below him and uh, you know they're selling a vitamin drink. Uh, the middle picture is uh, uh, steel cable netting and double twist rock fall netting that we put across this area to protect the roadway below and the dam. On the bottom left is making the Tyrolean traverse off the lost arrow spire in Yosemite. Bottom right is uh, working on some of the monster windmills that they have nowadays. Uh, I did safety at one of the farms up in Wyoming and caught this picture as they were setting a prop. Anyway, the top uh, right the uh, top of a mountain. I've been on a few mountains over the years and traveled to a lot of places, or I guess around the world, to uh, climb and stuff. But the point I'm trying to make is I've been in lots of high-risk situations and figured out uh, some ways to look at safety that's different than what we traditionally do. Our expedition, this is on Mount McKinley in Alaska, our expedition had to go through what's called, it's the northeast fork of the Kahiltna, but anyway, uh, it's nicknamed the Valley of Death because entire parties have disappeared 
so the rumors go anyway. Uh, and it's not hard to believe because if they spend very much time in this area, there's big avalanches that come off this left side here. They're not just regular snow avalanches, although they could be. They're a big serac or ice avalanches. There's a couple of our team members down here below. Uh, you can see our trail where we use skis or snowshoes to come up there. And this is a place where uh, people, rather than stopping and just stepping to the side and letting you slip by, they keep trucking. They want to get out of here because while you're in here, it's pretty scary. Uh, you look up at the sides and uh, see these big sracks hanging there and you just want to get out of there. Let's try something. We're going to tell these two climbers below to be safe. Better yet, let's tell them to be really, really safe. This is looking down from 16,000 feet at our 14,000 foot camp on the western rib of uh, Mount McKinley. On the bottom right is the glacier where the two climbers are. You can see we've come around and climbed up and actually we've set up one of our camps right down here below. Uh, there's some Swiss climbers here with us. Uh, one of them walked out to the edge here. These are cornices out here. And if uh, you walk too far out of them, they break off or you break through them and it's not very pleasant. So you have to remember to stay away from them. This big red arrow points out these big serac chunks of ice that I was telling you about. They can be pretty wide, you know, somewhere 500,000 feet thick. So when they break off, they make quite an impression. And down here is where the climbers are. These are the seracs. This is looking up from the valley floor and as you go underneath these, wow. It, it has sort of a, it makes you want to travel pretty darn quick because you don't want to be caught under here if a big chunk of this breaks off and uh, comes down and you can see they've been doing it for eons. Does it make sense to attempt to make safety a black and white thing? that is either safe or not safe? Is there such a thing as safe? We can reduce our risks or we can reduce our risk exposure. This is an example of traditional approach to safety. Often people will say it's safe or it's not safe. We do this by the way we teach safety is we do it by teaching them about hazards and the skills associated with danger and taking risks. Uh, this happens to be an avalanche that came down while we were in camp that evening and went across the tracks and it's actually a rather small one. If we tell people to make it safe, how do they do that? Safe is intangible. Safe is like hot and cold, light and dark. We do not turn on the dark to make a room dark. We turn off or reduce the light. We do not make the refrigerator cold. We do not, we do not, to make a refrigerator cold, we do not uh, turn on the cold. We reduce or remove the heat. To make this glacier safe, we do not turn on the safe. We reduce the risks or our risk exposure. Is this glacier safe? Is there anywhere that is truly safe? Low risk maybe, safe no. We can identify and touch risks. It is a tangible we can work with. Another problem with safe is who defines the line of what is safe and what is not safe? If we tell someone is safe, we're asking them to do the impossible because there's no such thing as safe. What if we say keep risks low? Also, if we say something is safe, we consciously and or unconsciously let our guards down. Why not? It's safe. What if we ask climbers to identify the risks and dangers and they expo they're exposed to and see which ones they can eliminate or reduce and do so, thus reducing their risk exposure? This is an avalanche come across the road. Uh, I worked at Timpanogos Cave for a while. I got a chuckle out of this picture. Uh, if you look closely, you can see this uh, ranger holding a shovel right here. Kind of a can-do attitude, I guess. Uh, 
Anyway, the way, one of the things I did while working there is that I was in visitor protection and resource management, and so I had to deal with risks. It was part of my job. Hazards are made up of two things, risk potential or the possibility of happening. If it doesn't happen or can't happen, then there's no hazard. Risk factor, even if it happens and it's not serious, Maybe if it's a snowball rolling down the side of a mountain site. Well, that's not very serious, even though it is, a, you know, theoretically a snow slide. <laughs> anyway, it's made up of two things, and the way they interact make the difference. This is a, a big block that fell while I was camping out. And, uh, you know, I usually set my camp up in places where I'm not exposed to rockfall. And this night I was sleeping in my tent, and I heard the... A big rock fall and I thought hmm that's interesting and then uh, went back to sleep well in the morning I found out I couldn't go back the way I'd come this had fallen and crossed the road uh, I had to go out a different way through the back country well, I guess this is the back country but even further in the back country um, anyway later on the Department of Transportation actually made a tunnel through it because it's an important uh, go through road Falls are number one killers in construction, number two in industry, and a very high uh, killer at home and at play. What is risk potential and risk factor? Well, let's look at it for a minute. Risk potential is the possibility of something happening. This picture on the left, what's the possibility of this gentleman falling off the ladder or whoever it is? I would say it's maybe out of zero to ten, I'd say it's about a nine, it's pretty high. On this